All right, so if we want to look for places that have potentially water, liquid water, now we did actually see some places else in the solar system that weren't Mars that we could look for. Yeah, so I mean, Mars we know has lots of ice and probably underground has water. The other place are some of the moons of the outer planets. Yep. So here's Callisto, and we believe this has an ocean beneath its surface. Yep. Um, and there's um, Enceladus, which we know has some liquid because we see it squirting out. Exactly, and you know, it's what we talked about when we were exploring this earlier. Um, and so that presumably also has an ocean that might just be pockets of briny water. Yeah. Um, in, this case, in this case, the ice crust is a bit thinner. Yep. In some cases, we believe there's like a, you know, hundreds of kilometers of ice for the water. Under exactly. The in this case, it might only be 10 kilometers of ice. And this is because, we, again, we see it seeping out and spilling out. So we kind of know it has to be somewhat yep. closer. And then Europa, yep. again, you look at all these beautiful cracks on the surface. And there's maybe even some evidence for some plumes here yep. as well. So once again, we think there's a liquid, probably rather salty ocean somewhere beneath it, kept warm by the tidal pulling of yep. the giant planets they're orbiting, as we said. And so this means then clearly, if it looks like it's somewhat temperate, it obviously has liquid water, great place to look for life? Yeah, so this is the, the other place that people think um, might be good for life is on these uh, Jupiter and Saturn icy moons. Uh, because again it's liquid it's not liquid on the surface as there's no atmosphere on the surface it would couldn't survive on the surface uh, but if you go away down it might well be there okay and this is sufficiently exciting that there's a couple of missions the european yep. space agency has their juice mission that's right jupiter icy moons explorer um, and then there's the uh, europa express from nasa yep. both of which are scheduled for launch in the next few years yeah and, and they're designed to have a closer look at some of these icy moons yep. to try and work out if there really is an ocean under the surface if it's leaking up near the surface if there are plumes maybe you could fly through the plumes and actually find out what it's made out of and i think even in the last uh, decade of planet planetary science they said we need now a new mission to enceladus because of that exact reason so we are going to start getting good data not quite the same on mars though of these moons as he said in the next decade or so yeah so presumably if there are life forms maybe it sometimes will be carried near the surface um maybe some of it come out of the plumes and we can see some biochemical influence maybe yep. break down products or something like this to really investigate it properly is going to be tricky yeah you're going to need to i don't know melt your way through many kilometers of ice but we've talked about submarines that might do this that's right but again it's you know we're talking about tens at least of kilometers deep so it's not a hey i just get a shovel on mars and dig down you're you're doing some serious excavating yeah so again it's a it's a possible place uh, it's going to be very hard to prove it one way or the other though so even if though enceladus and 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 these moons have life it is tens at least of kilometers underneath the surface and there's no sunlight so how does that work if it's on mars it's got at least a few meters below the surface and we yeah. know that on life on earth life relies yeah. on the sun yeah we get photosynthesis and the photosynthesis is the energy and either you photosynthesize yourself if you're a plant or algae or you eat something that's photosynthesized. that's right or, I mean, even in the deep oceans, often you get you know, dead whales that sink down to the bottom right. and then the life forms live off it. So almost everything is living off uh, sun, sunlight. But that's actually a relatively new phenomenon on Earth. Photosynthesis wasn't evolved for the first two billion years of life on Earth. So, so, the, so the first couple of billion years, there, there wasn't this? No, that's right. So as far as we can tell, for about half the period that life's been on Earth, it hadn't figured out photosynthesis. Photosynthesis this is a very difficult chemical reaction. It actually relies on some weird quantum mechanics as it happens. Okay. Um, and it didn't have it. Um, and then at some point about two billion years ago, some bacteria produced photosynthesis and released oxygen as a result and changed the entire climate of the Earth. Okay. Oxygen was released in a great catastrophe, probably killed all the other things. So you, you're a new bacteria, you've come up with a way of turning sunlight into fuel, and as a byproduct, you produce oxygen, which is insanely toxic to everything else. And wipe everything out. And so you take over the world. So this is a great evolutionary... I was going to say, there, I feel a new Hollywood movie coming online. Yeah, watching bacteria grow, I think it's going to be exciting. <laughs> but we know there was a great change over to oxygen atmosphere two, two, two and a bit billion years ago on Earth. Yep. But that means that for a long time on Earth, things weren't relying at least anything like the same extent on sunlight. Okay. And we know that on Earth there are life forms that do not use sunlight. Um, these, this is called a, a black smoker. Okay. And these are ocean, volcanic, underwater ocean vents. So these are vents 
deep in the ocean? So deep that the light doesn't come down to okay. them. Okay. And so photosynthesis is no use here. Yep. But as you can see, there is abundant life on these things. And these are actually getting the energy from chemical reactions in the compounds being squirted out from the volcanoes. Oh, so it's almost feeding living off the volcanoes rather than the sun. Yeah, so this gives us some hope that life can actually survive and indeed flourish even in complete absence of light in, say, beneath 10 kilometers of ice or 100 kilometers of ice. Even on top of the ice, the sunlight's pretty faint out yeah, of Jupiter yeah, and Saturn, yeah. or many meters below the surface of Mars. So it's not ridiculous. Presumably, it's living off volcanoes. We know Mars yep. had volcanoes in the past, and there may be a bit of volcanic leakage even going on today. That's right. Um, and uh, you know, some of the moons have volcanoes. Yep. Io. Uh, yep, as we talked um, about. Yep. And so it, it could be some of these chemicals being produced by radioactive decay and the like in these oceans that give chemicals they can use. So it's, it's really trying to get outside the idea of what we think of as life being us, but really, again, these very complex cellular machines, these bacteria, which can kind of survive these seemingly harsh conditions. Yes, yeah, so if there is life out there, this life is going to be living off some sort of volcanic chemicals and not sunlight. So again, it would be, but that's probably what life on Earth did for the first two million years, so that's not ridiculous. And we do think that maybe this is in our solar system, and then maybe in the next well, few years, decade, we may have an answer? Yes, a lot of money is being invested in trying to solve this. Personally, I'm a bit sceptical. I mean, even if life is abundant in the universe, really there's nowhere else in our solar system that's very hospitable. Yeah. I mean, maybe it got going in Mars, uh, but I, I suspect it's probably died out since then because it's you know, trying to find the right combination of volcanic food and liquid water is going to be pretty hard. And even if in principle it could survive in the oceans, there's no particular reason why it might have, should have evolved in the first place. Yep. It's very cold there, chemical reactions are going to be very slow, there aren't many energy sources. So I would not be surprised if life was common in exoplanets, other stars, but still there's nothing else in our solar system. Or I guess, or even it was common on Mars, say, three billion years ago when it was a lot All more. we're going to find is microscopic fossils. Yep. So, but who knows? I would be very excited and pleased to be proven wrong on this.